Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our Modern OpenGL series. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the projection matrix and how to actually make what's been appearing as a rectangle actually a square on our screen, as it truly should be. Now, there's many different types of projections. We're going to talk about perspective in this lesson to get you started. And this is most commonly what's used in various real-time applications. So with that said, let's go ahead and hop in and see exactly what the problem is here. Now, again, if we take a careful look at this program that we've been running from our previous lessons, which make sure you check out in the description if you haven't seen here, it's a very rectangular rendering, when if we actually look at our vertex specification where we're passing in the data, well, if we look carefully at our positions, we are setting up a square here. So what's going on? And the reality is we just don't have perspective. And perspective is the general idea of how we see things. So I'll go ahead and give a few different ideas here. Now there's many different types of perspective that we have, but in general here in Blender, if I open this up here, and if you pay attention to the little grid lines here, you'll see that they're getting smaller as they go further away. That's sort of a perspective projection. Now again, there's many different types here, for example, if I hit five here, this gives us an orthographic projection. And it doesn't matter how far away each of these grid lines are or the edges of this cube, you still see them as the same distance. So the ratios are sort of preserved. And that can be very useful if you're designing something in architecture, for instance, so that you're preserving the ratio, right? If you're an architect, meaning building a building, you just want to know that the room is 10 feet by 12 feet, and that's how it is. You don't really care how it looks in a sense. You want the structural stability or maybe value other attributes. But for us, when we're trying to render things realistically, we want perspective. And another example of this, if I go ahead and close out Blender here and just open up uh, the drawing pad, is that if you have something in your screen here, like looking down a railroad track, you would expect that over time, the rails uh, and, and again, be careful um, if you're doing this experiment, um, you know, would converge and get smaller. So things are sort of squished together and they converge towards the center of the screen as they get further away. So another way to think about this is the X, Y, and Z positions of each of the individual points here. I'm dividing X by Z, the Y coordinate by Z, and well, Z divided by Z, this is sort of the perspective divide part that, you know, essentially is one, but this is basically just the idea that as stuff gets further away, it gets smaller, right? That's how we want to represent those points uh, so they converge. Um, that basic intuition, uh, and I'll go ahead and share one more thing with you here, is this idea of the perspective matrix in OpenGL. Now we've learned a little bit about different uh, transformation matrices, translation, scaling, and rotation, for instance, but now we have different types of projection matrices. And again, the one that we care about today is perspective. Now, the Scratch Pixel website, which, you know, give them a big shout out uh, to take a look at, um, they have a nice read up here if you want to read more and derive this yourself. But just intuitively looking at this down the diagonal here, you can see that's kind of like the special uh, transformation matrix that we had for scaling. So we're kind of scaling our X and our Y points in a certain way based off of how far away they are. And you can see we're kind of doing something with the interesting uh, Z part here. Um, so that's just kind of the, the intuition behind uh, how this is working here. Now, again, the good news for us is that we're actually going to have built in a perspective matrix. If you want an orthographic, so again, if you're an architect or want to preserve ratios, we have that built in a GLM, but we have perspective already built for us. And this is part of the actual, I'll scroll down here, matrix uh, transform library, which I've already included in our uh, code, but just to point you out where to actually find this. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this perspective matrix here, and I'm gonna click on it just so we can see uh, the different uh, fields here so we can uh, go ahead and start coding this. All right, so what this is going to allow us to do is two things. So let me go ahead and show you one of the things that it's going to allow us to do. And in order to do this, I'm going to need to go into uh, our code here. And I'll just show you that we don't have perspective right now. So if I go ahead and run our code, so this is in the uh, translate part, I'm going to actually modify the uh, Z portion of our translation. Okay, so this is the our model matrix from last time. We were saying, hey, we want to, uh, you know, move our object up and down, but now we want to move it back and forth. So along the Z coordinate, since we're looking just straight on here. So that's what I'm going to modify this time. So I made a modification to my code. Let me go ahead and compile this. 
Um, let's go ahead and run it. And if I go ahead and run this and I hold up and down, you'll notice that our object is not moving at all because we don't have any perspective. It doesn't matter how far away we are or how far away we push this object away into the screen here. Um, it's the perspective's not there. So that's what we need to fix. We need a perspective matrix. So what we're going to go ahead and do here is in our shader, create the perspective matrix. So let's go ahead in our shader here. Let's actually, uh, let's split this window here. And in our vertex uh, shader at the top here, we're going to add another uniform variable here, a matrix four, and I'll call this U perspective. And as we learned last time, we need to actually use this matrix here. So I'm going to actually go put this here, U perspective, and multiply that by our model matrix here. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, work with that here. So I've got our model matrix and our perspective matrix. Okay. Um, and that should be it. Uh, let's go ahead and close that off. And then let's go ahead and set up um, our perspective here. So this is our model transformation by translating our object into world uh, space. And then the next uh, thing that we want to set up here is our projection matrix. So let's go ahead and set that up here. This is going to be our uh, projection matrix in perspective. And let's go ahead and call this, um, you know, something uh, reasonable here, perspective. Uh, make sure I spell it right, perspective. And again, this is going to be GLM perspective. And let's go ahead and uh, uh, look at those um, arguments here. Uh, so the field of view here, that's how wide we see in our screen, okay? So our field of view as humans, you can kind of, you know, put your hands by your side and see how wide can you see. An owl or a fish might be able to see almost behind itself and have a wider field of view. Um, or if you take a picture um, with your iPhone, for example, or Android phone with a wide, wider field of view, you have a greater vision, you can see more stuff, but there's a little bit of distortion. So you want something sort of realistic. Um, and 45 radians is usually um, reasonable. So keep in mind that this field of view is expressed in radians. So I'll just highlight that and I'll show you uh, how to do that in code. GLM radians here, 45.0F. Uh, the aspect ratio, so this is going to be the uh, screen width, which we have uh, defined here uh in our screen here divided by the screen height and notice that i am casting to floats here uh, because i do want a actual decimal number here okay well, let's kind of separate these onto uh, separate lines and then the last things that we need are the um near and the far uh clipping plane okay so let's go ahead and uh, add those in and what that is is basically how far we can see into the world Okay, so 0 0.1 is a reasonable. Uh, that's how close we can see things. Anything closer than 0 0.1 units, we can't see. That's sort of like a blind spot. And anything further away than 10 units, uh, we can't see as well. Um, and that's, you know, we don't want to see millions of units. You know, a lot of folks will just make these, you know, 0 0.000001 to, you know, a million or something. We lose some numerical precision by doing that, by you know, having this huge range. So we try to make this a good range, but not so far that objects will disappear. Okay. And we can talk about this or feel free to comment below if this is a little bit uh, confusing. So this is how close we can see things. Uh, nothing closer than 0.1 and nothing further than 10 units. Okay. So that'll set up the code for us here. And then let's go ahead and set up our uh, perspective. We want to grab the location here, the perspective location. Uh, so we're retrieving the location of our uh, perspective matrix uniform. Okay, and this has to be spelled exactly as we did it. So perspective. And we want to check to make sure that we actually retrieve our perspective location here. And set up accordingly our perspective uh, location here. And this is a 4x4 four four matrix. Um, so let's make sure we get the uh, perspective matrix here. And let's make sure that we give ourselves the right error message in case I've broken something. Um, so let's see if that works here. And now I'll go ahead and recompile. A uh, few errors here. Okay. <laughs> That's to be expected here. Let me go ahead and scroll up here. Let's see what we messed up here. Error, no matching function to perspective float. Float. Uh, let's see. Probably some missing uh, commas or something. 
let's just go ahead and take a look at this here um oh yeah one uh missing uh parentheses it looks like or rather an extra one here at the end let's get rid of that and let's see one error not too bad actually compiles um can't find you perspective uh location oops uh let's see if i uh misspelled something here uh you perspective uh let's go ahead and open up our shader here and maybe you folks uh caught this before i did that's always a challenge you underscore perspective um let's see looks like i spelled it uh oops i didn't give myself a good error message here um let's go ahead and let's split our window here go into main uh, about 400 um let's see here what we did here if i scroll down here here's perspective we're looking for the location of perspective ah perspective location yeah uh, so I did add autocomplete, uh, hurt me here. Uh, there we are. And let's make sure that we give ourselves, um, the correct, uh, yeah, that looks good to me. So let's go ahead and try to recompile this, uh, rerun it. And now it looks like it is running here on our screen here. So now if I hit up here and down, let's see if that's actually adjusting anything. Um, doesn't look like it's moving quite yet here. So let's think about, uh, what we did here. So is it actually uh, moving or translating our object? Well, let's double check in our code to see if we are uh, actually using our perspective matrix. And we are because we're multiplying it through here. Um, and we do have to think a little bit about the order here. I'm gonna talk about this at the end here just to sort of uh, put things uh, together here. Uh, so here's our position, here's our model matrix, here's our perspective. Um, so that looks, that all looks okay to me here. All right. So let's go ahead and just run this again here. And uh, let's see here. Uh, I'll compile it. I'll save everything. And let's go ahead and look at our code here. And again, up, down, it's not changing anything. So what's going on here? And you're saying, well, Mike, you know, we're back to basically where we were with our perspective uh, before uh, not being applied, even though we went through all this trouble of adding in this perspective matrix. Well, there's one, again, subtle thing that we have to worry about here. So let me bring us back to uh, the drawing board here, our other diagram. Um, and, and this is where it's a little bit important to actually go through the process of, you know, going through one of these matrices and understanding uh, this perspective divide that's actually going on here. So, uh, you know, the actual Z component, uh, or, or sorry, I should say that the W component here. And that's exactly what we have here. Um, if I pop into our uh, shader here, um, you'll notice here I'm I'm using 1.0 here, so it doesn't matter what our transformation is. So so what we really want to do here is just say we can either get rid of all of this and just put new position, uh, or I could put this back here uh, just to show explicitly what the problem was and do dot w here. Okay, so we have to be a little bit careful there uh, with our OpenGL. I'm just going to leave this as new position, um, you know, um, just to make sure that we have everything. Uh, we're actually in our, our code. Let me just leave it as is uh, and put a comment here. Uh, don't forget W here. Okay. Um, and if you are going to forget it, you know, uh, you know, just put GL position equals uh, new position here. So now if I actually uh, compile our code, uh, let's actually run it here. Uh, and I've translated our object back a little bit. Let me hold down here for a little bit. Now we can actually move our cube out into the world and back into the world. Um, let's go ahead and change um, our cube. I change it to negative five or something. Um, oh, no, I had it just the offset. So it's, it's actually zero um, by default here. Um, so it's sort of in the screen, <laughs> we could sort of say. Um, so I would want to modify this a little bit. OK, now before I move forward here, um, let me go ahead and just leave this. Uh, I'll leave some of this code on here so you can take a peek if you want. Um, I want to just go ahead and revisit our little diagram here where we're talking about in the previous video, moving from local coordinates to world space. Um, and after we move to world space, what we actually want to do is uh, do something called view space, uh, which this is our camera. And I'm just going to kind of leave this as an empty question mark here. And then we go to our projection. OK. Um, and then we, uh, you know, do some other transformations. But this is where we actually get the perspective our sort of uh, railroad track 
uh, diagram that we've learned about today. Um, so that's the that's the idea here. Oops, let me let me move out of the way and. Uh, redraw that so you can actually see me putting in the projection here um, but going from view space uh, to our projection space with the railroad tracks there um, that's the idea so we got to talk about what this view space is um, in, a, in another lesson and i might do this next or i'll move it a little bit uh, but this is basically our camera okay in our world um, because again we, we could be able to move our camera around and then what uh, our projection is, what we talked about, you can imagine that's the lens that we put on our camera. Okay, so we can see a wide field of view, get a panoramic shot or whatever. Um, so that's the idea um, in this lesson. So uh, let me go ahead and just do a quick uh, code review here because we've added a lot of code here. Again, just starting with our shader, we've got two uniform variables here. Now for our model matrix, which moves us into world space. Um, and we're going to see how we change this into a model view later on. Uh, again, talked about that camera where we're perceiving the world. But now we've got our perspective. Um, and actually, you know, just to uh, make this a little bit more correct, I want to just call it projection because um, we can have different types of uh, projections. The one that we're using is perspective. Okay, we'll use a perspective projection. Uh, just so we're clear on our uh, terminology here okay so now i got to go back into my uh main here let's go into our perspective um and um so let's just to be clear here we'll be modifying uh you projection here okay uh and i can still call this uh let's call this projection location all right um just so we're clear on that um again i tried to be as um it's good to name things uh correctly uh, as we're learning them okay but this is still a perspective projection so i'm going to leave that as is here okay so let me go ahead and just compile this make sure i didn't uh, blow anything up here uh no errors we don't see anything until i start hitting uh the back arrow which is pushing our object into the screen remember your coordinate system if you use your right hand rule um, your your third finger or middle finger that's the positive z direction we have a right-handed system in OpenGL so the negative direction is going to push stuff out to where we see it so that's why you see the offset going negative again here okay anyway a little bit of a code review of all of our code quickly before we wrap up here uh, again we'll start from uh, main here again following the graphics pipeline we initialize our STL program specify our vertices create our graphics pipeline and then in our main loop here where we are uh, we handle any user input, so pressing the up and down key in these demos, our pre-draw, where we are sending in our uniform variables in our shader, and then we issue our draw call, which starts our shader, our graphics pipeline, our vertex shader, and our fragment shader, uh, and then we refresh our window here. All right, so that's the idea um, for this lesson. I'll go ahead and cut it off here, uh, and I hope you now understand a little bit more about uh, perspective and the role that this plays. A lot of tutorials will sort of show you uh, using GLM perspective, which which is great that's what i've done uh, but you do want to you know take a look at sometime the projection matrix how to derive it in particular that perspective matrix as that's what most games vr uh reality apps and stuff are going to use all right folks i hope you enjoyed this go ahead and comment below if you have questions subscribe so you don't miss any of my lessons here on this OpenGL series and as always thank you for your time and attention